There is still an overly romanticized perception of how Inuits in the Arctic region live. But here in Tasila, Greenland, people live in a town with new homes, supermarkets, and other modern amenities. In a place where nothing grows, however, some old traditions and methods of subsistence can't be abandoned easily. Seal hunting is one of them. Hunting is an integral part of the local community's tradition and nutrition. Seal meat is a major contributor to the local diet and an important nutrient, being rich in omega-3 and iron. Traditionally, seal and narwhal meat were the recipe for Inuit survival through the Arctic winters. Even if they have experienced dietary transitions as part of a more modern lifestyle, seal remains a staple food and its products a source of income. Traditional Inuit diets derive approximately 50% of their calories from fat, 30 to 35% from protein, and only 15 to 20% of their calories from carbohydrates. Apart from that, many inhabitants of Greenland and Arctic Canada lived from the sealskin trade. Yet this business came into conflict with the surge of conservation and animal welfare activities. The seal hunting controversy has now been around for decades and is probably one of the most emotionally charged conservation and animal rights issues. It all started with a 1960s CBC documentary showing disturbing pictures of seals in Canada being clubbed to death, which triggered a wave of indignation. Conservation movements started to form demanding a complete ban on hunting, especially of seal pups. Apart from the disturbing brutality of the images, a specific biological factor was brought into play. Seals in the Arctic have a thick insulating layer of blubber to help them survive in the freezing temperatures. Young pups, also known as white coats, lack this layer, instead using their characteristic white pelts as protection until they shed them after three to five weeks. The demand for seal skin in Europe and North America was focused specifically on these white coats, which were wanted for fur production. This particularly endangered reproduction cycles and thus the entire species. On the other hand, it's easy to win people over to your side with images of adorable baby seals. Celebrities like Brigitte Bardot got involved and pictures of them with cute seal pups helped to make the topic popular. The hunting and trading of fur from seal pups under the age of three weeks was banned in the 1980s. This was a major win for conservation movements, but nevertheless, the protests continued. When that was adopted, uh, or after that had been adopted, after the European um, uh, market was banned, um, the Canadian sealers just shifted to seals which are not white anymore. And, but which are still technically pups because they're not se uh, sexually mature. Yet. And so um, that idea, you know, for a lot of people, including NGOs and also policymakers, that was just semantics, you know. And so it's like they're still pups, essentially. So in that sense, the, the, the seal pups directive that explicitly mentioned white coats was not enough. In 2009, the EU decided to implement a total ban on seal products. 
but not everybody was happy about that. From a very realistic perspective, that really doesn't work because, um, first of all, um, Inuit are dependent on the market chains of the commercial ceilings. So um, the, the, the uh, furs are being are being auctioned at fur auctions, and they enter basically the commercial market chains. So when since, and since there is no labeling in place, there is no way to distinguish between commercially hunted um, uh, uh, seals and uh, seal seal skins from from uh, Inuit hunts, particularly uh, when they have already gone through the processing stage, because you know then they are being dyed and uh, being worked into other products and so on, you know, and so it's very difficult to differentiate that, uh, those. And um, since there is no labeling system in place, so when the, uh, now with the recent ban, when the markets of the uh, of the European Union closed down, um, the buyers didn't care whether um, the uh, uh, they were from, from Inuit or not. They just didn't buy them anymore at all. So it's, as, as I said, since there is no labeling, um, system in place. And um, so that was actually something that hit the Inuit pretty hard. The debate always revolved around two sides of criticism, the animal welfare perspective on the one hand and the fight against excessive commercial seal hunting by conservationists on the other. But the point that is missed today is that, in reality, these approaches are outdated. Negative consequences of environmental impacts like climate change and water pollution threaten Arctic seal populations on a much larger scale. At the beginning of the summer, a dramatic image went viral. It showed dogs carrying a traditional Inuit sled across a field of melted sea ice. The picture taken by Stefan Olsen shows one symptom of an alarming trend. With the average temperatures rising, declining sea ice caps are a severe threat to ice-breeding seals in the Arctic region. These seals are hugely dependent on stable pack ice. Reduced sea ice availability and stability causes a reduction of whelping areas and an increased risk of disease due to overcrowding on whelping patches. Recent studies also suggest that the reduction of the polar ice caps and a projected increase in local shipping activity could have a severe impact on the levels of pollution experienced across the entire Arctic region. It all goes to show that if we really want to protect these seals, we need a much more holistic approach. We need to protect the environment as a whole to safeguard the sea ice and preserve Arctic wildlife's habitats.